Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we'll be looking at uh, basics of memory management and how program goes through various stages of compilation and linking and uh, how operating system given an executable, how operating system maps the program into the memory. Okay. Uh, so if you have taken compiler course before, or if you have uh, like background with respect to object files and how to, and if you understand basically how, for instance, an external function such as printf gets called, if you understand the basics of that, then this lecture might be uh, a repetition of the material. Uh, but nonetheless, if you don't, uh, if you want to refresh your memory on various as aspects of compilation, I suggest you to uh, uh, go through the lecture. Okay. So uh, if you have taken a compiler course, uh, you might have seen that uh, compiler takes uh, C files, uh, source files, and then compiles them into object files. And then there is another component called linker, which links these object files together into an executable. And then when we try to run the executable, there is another component called loader that actually loads the executable into memory and then uh, the memory required for the process that's running will be handled by the operating system. We'll be looking at that uh, in the next lecture. Memory management is done by the operating system. And finally, when process executes, then each instruction will be executed by the processor, which is CPU. Okay, let's see uh, what is the view of memory as seen by different stages of the program. So let's look at a simple example. So here we have uh, two C files. We have main and we have math.c. And here you can see that uh, main uses an externally defined function sin, like main has a call to function sin, which is actually defined in math.c. Furthermore, main also calls two external functions, specifically printf and scanf, which are defined in external libraries like libc okay and how does this program gets compiled and linked so what happens when we give these two c files to gcc for instance okay so first the first step is compilation so the compilation is a process of generating object files from c files so uh, what compiler does is it takes the C file, it does pre-processing, and then finally converts C file into an object file. So which basically contains instructions and uh, some uh, memory related to some, some contents related to the variables which are present in the C file. However, the information is incomplete. That means uh, it doesn't have all the information that is needed to execute. Okay? So compiler just generates an object file. And if we look more deeply, the object file contains uh, various components. Okay, the first one is a header, uh, which basically defines uh, where the different components are. And then object file typically has uh, two important segments: code segment and the data segment. Okay, code stands for uh, if like code is the segment where uh, all the code of the object file stays, and data segment contains all the data like variables and uh, like global variables uh, and maybe heap so on and so forth and then uh, operating system ha kind of handles uh, stack and everything as we saw in the previous lecture we have this activation record that gets pushed onto the stack when a function gets called right uh, so operating system and takes care of managing the stack and then object file also contains address of these segments like address of the code segment and the address of the data segment. And another important things that object file contains are symbol table and relocation information. Okay, so symbol table contains information about all the externally visible components that are present in the object file. Okay, for instance, uh, it could be the symbol table can contain the name of all the methods that are defined in the object file like in the corresponding C file. And then relocation information uh, is the information that is uh, needed for the linker to fix certain references. 
we will be looking at relocation information later with an example. And then uh, object file can also contain some additional information that is needed for debugger. Like in order to debug programs, when you have an object file, then uh, the debug information is used by, for instance, GDB to display more uh, fine-grained information. So what does the compiler not do? Compiler doesn't know the final layout of the memory because compiler just produces an object file. That object file could be, uh, could be part of various executables or there could be many object files that form an executable, right? So compiler, when it compiles a C file, it doesn't know the final memory layout of the executable. So it assumes that everything's, every segment starts at address zero, okay? So, and, uh, so it just, uh, it creates an object file by making all the segments start at address zero. And then it creates a symbol table for the linker to say, what are all the symbols that are in the object file? And then it also has re uh, relocation information that that's also a hint for the linker, rather command for the linker to fix all the references that are within the object file. For instance, like the main function that we saw, main file that we saw before, when it gets compiled, when you use GCC and use uh, the GCC minus C, the object file that you get contains a symbol table. Here we have only one function that is defined, right? So that we have main. And then it has data segment that contains all the variables that are defined, like global variables that are defined in main.c, which is x and val. And also the code segment now contains all the code of main, okay? An important thing to note here is all the calls to external functions, means the functions which are not defined in main.c, they are just replaced with dummy call instructions, okay? And compiler generates this relocation records, which says that, which basically is a command for linker to, uh, to replace the corresponding locations with the address of uh, appropriate symbols. For instance, uh, the last uh, call instruction, so there is a link from uh, function sin, sign uh, to call instruction. This says that if at all, if linker ever finds function sin, so linker should uh, write rewrite the call instruction with the appropriate address of the sin function, okay? So relocation records are just pointers for linker so that linker can modify corresponding instructions with appropriate addresses because compiler doesn't know the address of, of these functions, right? Because these functions could be defined in another file. Specifically in this instance, sign is actually defined in another file called mat.c, which compiler doesn't know. So that's the reason for this relocation records. Okay, and then one thing to note here is the address of all the segments is zero. As I mentioned before, compiler doesn't know the final memory layout of the executable. So it just uh, puts the start, start address of every segment as zero. And then similarly, if you see the object file of math.c, you see the same things, okay? Here, since math, like the functions uh, sign, it doesn't call any external functions. That's why there are no relocation records. However, the symbol table contains only one entry, which is sin saying that this object file has the function sin defined. Then once compiler is done producing object files, linker comes in. So linker has three functions. It collects all the pieces of information needed for the program. Basically, it collects information from all the object files that are given, okay? And it figures out the new memory organization needed for the executable that it is about to produce, okay? Then it combines all the segments from different object files, okay? And then finally, it replaces the relocation entries. It replaces those uh, uh, appropriate locations with actual address of the functions. Basically, uh, in our case, in case of main.c, it will replace, for instance, last call instruction with the address of sin function, okay? And then finally, 
uh, Linker produces the executable file, which is like a dot out that we that we run. So note that Linker can shuffle segments uh, around, but it cannot rearrange information within a segment. That means uh, Linker can take a data segment from one object file and then data segment from another object file and it can reorder them any way it wants. But however, within a segment, it cannot change any entries within a segment. So Linker usually does, uh, it's, uh, achieves its functionality in two passes. The first pass uh, is just a reading pass where it, uh, it figures out what should be the final memory layout. Okay, and then pass two, it, that is when it actually generates the final object file, final executable by modifying all the addresses with, relocate, with, proper, uh, with proper relocation entries. So pass one, uh, it just reads all the given object files and it reads all the symbol information from each object file. And uh, by the end of pass one, Linker knows what are all the functions that are defined in each object file and where are the, uh, where, where should it replace the addresses with, right? For instance, uh, if uh, in our example, when we give main and math.c, the first pass linker will determine that sin function is defined in math.c and it also knows that uh, in main dot, main dot o, it needs to replace uh, like an instruction with the address of sin dot c, with the address of function sin after it uh, writes the object file. Oh, sorry, executable. So in pass two, pass two is the final phase. Once it knows all this information in pass two, it just spits out the executable. It just re uh, takes the segment from each object file and uh, combines them, put them into one, into one, uh, one big segment. And then it fixes all the addresses with the appropriate uh, final addresses. So putting it all together in pass one is a static pass kind of uh, linker reads all the object files that are given specifically symbol table and relocation table. And then pass two, that's when it actually generates the executable and while generation, it also fixes up all the relocation information all, as well. Basically that's, that, that's what I mean by touch, touch up addresses. So basically it, uh, it goes to the instruction code segment and then it modifies the instruction where call uh, is call zero is used. It replaces that with the appropriate address of the function. And finally it writes uh, the executable. So if we take our example, so when we give math.o and main.o that are generated by compiler. So linker first it determines uh, first it reads the symbol table of math.o and main.o. It knows that function sign is defined in math and function main is defined in main.o, okay? And it rearranges, it takes the segments from each of the object files and put them into uh, one combined segment in the main a.o. So it takes the symbol table of math.o and main.o and puts it into a bigger symbol table in a.out which contains now two entries in a main and it combines the data segment of math.o and main.o and it creates a bigger, seg bigger segment, combined segment with three variables and it combines the functions. Basically it, uh, it takes the code segment of math.o and main.o and puts them into a combined code segment. And an interesting thing is now it actually replaces the call instruction in main that corresponds to function sin with actually the address of sin, right? Because now it knows the address of uh, function sin. So it actually replaces uh, the address, replaces the call instruction with the absolute uh, rather virtual address of function sin. And other thing linker does is it also like for all the functions that are for, uh, that are not defined in any of the object files, it creates what 
we call as procedural linkage table entries. Basically, this is a hint for the dynamic linker, which we'll see later. Uh, so that it can like, so that these functions can be looked upon in the libraries. The, this is just a hint, uh, hint for the linker to say that, hey, these functions are not defined in this executable. So please, uh, please refer to the runtime libraries to find code for these functions. That's what uh, entries in procedural linkage table or PLT stand for. And yeah, what we have seen is static linking. So dynamic linking is uh, what happens for most of the library calls, right? So, uh, so instead of linking, for instance, in this case, uh, the printf and scanf, they are dynamically linked. So instead of that, what we can do is we can actually take the entire code of libc and then put it into every executable, okay? What happens there is uh, if we do that, then every executable becomes so big because now we are putting the entire code of libc into each executable, okay? And instead of that, so dynamic linking helps us to save space because it, it helps us, it enables all like different processes, different programs to use the same memory in which libc is loaded. Because libc is used by many programs, instead of loading one libc for each uh, executable, so it just, uh, operating system just loads libc once, and the dynamic linker links all the calls to libc functions into a single entry. And, uh, and dynamic linking has like at least two advantages. One, it saves space because now we can have only one copy. And this also makes other tasks such as updates, like live updates easier. So in order to update uh, libc, now we don't need to go through each process and then replace libc in each process. Rather, we just replace the libc in the common location because all, the, all processes use the same copy, right? So dynamic loading is done in two ways. One program can voluntarily use a function calls such as DL open to load a library into their memory address, into their virtual address space, and then call a function within that library. Or when they, like when the program calls some uh, certain library functions, dynamic linker automatically gets invoked and it will try to find the function in appropriate libraries in the runtime path. So uh, I mean, dynamic loading provides various advantages, right? This, this, pro, this, this has the programmer gets amazing flexibility. Like a programmer can just create a new program and uh, in the program, programmer can dynamically load some arbitrary code. So we don't know the code, we don't need to know the exact code, but rather we can ask the operating system to load the code from some random file and then execute that code. So uh, in the next part, we'll be looking at uh, how operating system manages the memory belongs to the executable and how it maps various segments of the executable to the virtual address space of the running process.